Hello, only productive people out there. This is Kevin from CC Pipe, where we focus on productivity and pipeline for creatives. Today, we'll be looking at text variables in InDesign. And uh, what is that? Sounds kind of technical and scary, right? Well, if you work with code, you're probably very familiar with variables, but text variables in InDesign aren't all that complicated. For example, you might be familiar with how page numbers work in InDesign. And uh, text variables, they use the same principle. You add a variable to a text box and the text output will vary depending on where or what it is. And as it so very often is, it makes a lot more sense when showing it. But first, I always like to mention why I think you should bother in the first place. If you watched earlier videos, I might start to sound like a broken clock by now, but uh, it helps us only having to write things once and uh, perhaps more importantly, being able to change all the occurrences of something in one place. As promised, I'll move on to showing you just how it works. Okay, back in good old InDesign. Text variables are found under type and uh, then text variables, logically. And uh, under insert variable, we can add pre-made variables from the list here. And uh, we won't look specifically at every one of these, but things like file name, output date, etc., should be rather straightforward. They will basically give you what they say and then update when you update your document. If we instead click on define, as you can see, we get a few more options. And uh, these are the same as in the list we just saw, but here we can edit them and uh, add new ones. So let's just click on new just to see how these are set up. We can name it, of course, and we choose a type. Maybe we choose file name. And a lot of these have options for the variable, in this case being the file name. And then you can add text before or after to be displayed. And it gives you a preview down here as well. So let's look at some more practical examples. I mentioned page numbers earlier, uh, and uh, let's do something with that. Page numbers are preferably set up in the master. As you can see, I've already prepared this a bit. And uh, now what I want to do is not only show the page number, but the current and the last page number. So last page may of course change as we go along, so we don't want to make that a static number. And uh, then we can use the variables. First, I'll add the page number though, and uh, that's under type insert special markers and uh, current page number. Now we add the variable part. We go to type variables and define. And here we have the last page number. Choose edit. And the thing I want to add here is the text out of before. And uh, now we can press insert. And uh, let me just copy this over to the other side as well. We should now see that we have our page number set up as we wanted. And if we add a page, we should also see it update. And uh, indeed, it seems to be doing that. Next, one thing I learned making this video is that you can use metadata from images to make, for example, captions. So here I have a mock-up of a monitor. And uh, this image has metadata info about copyright, which I want to add here. And uh, by the way, I'll make a video about how to manage metadata in Bridge in the future. So let's set this up then. The text box is already there, so we need to just insert the variable. Back to the same menu, and uh, this time choose image, name, and uh, edit. Under metadata, we now have an array of items to choose from. The one I wanted, however, was the copyright, which should be somewhere around here. And, uh, lastly, before, I want to add the copyright symbol, which is control alt c by the way, and then just OK and done. And now it has the copyright info in place. Note that the text box seemingly needs to intersect with the image to work properly, by the way. Last but not least, my uh, favorite, the running header. This allows us in the same way as the table of contents to have a dynamic header, which is linked to text using a certain style. And I have a header up here and I want it to show me the current article name. So we go back to the same menu once again and uh, choose running header and edit. Now we want to choose our style and uh, articles names use h1 here so that is the one we want and in this case I don't want to add anything so I'll just press ok and then insert and uh, let me just copy it to the other side as well and uh, now if we scroll here we should see that it changes when we get to a new chapter and uh, yes it does. Here we have article 1 and then it senses the article 2 here and the header changes with it. And those were all my examples for today. Hope it showed you how variables can be used to optimize your InDesign projects. 
Thank you so much for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps me out a lot. And also if you have any productivity questions or suggestions for future videos, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Once again, thank you and until next time, have a good one.